Tor Presence. That is Potter's Field. All right. It is, uh, what the hell time is? Wednesday. It is like noonish or something. It is the day before Thanksgiving, and uh, we are here for uh, train wreck radio. I mean, the, the life radio show. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, I'm just I'm just going to get started because I have nothing else. I'm, I have nothing better to do the day before Thanksgiving. So I'm just going to get started. In the studio, we'll just go clockwise. We have Jess Cordray back to sniff more ashes. Why did we let you sit on that side of the studio? <laughs> yeah, just, once again. It's still <laughs> dusty. The chair still dusty. Somebody didn't clean around here real well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try something. I wonder if I shut this off, if it'll just shut the recording off. Anyway, Scotty Mays is sitting is sitting to his left. Hello. Not snorting ashes no, because he's that's, clean now. That's old behavior. <laughs> so, ain't about that life anymore. Ain't about that. And uh, sitting to uh, to my right and Scotty's left, just so you have a full layout of the room, is, is uh, Kyle Steele. I like to imagine your listeners are, are really appreciative of, like, they can really picture us in this room. I think you painted they, it. Well, they, they draw a lot with crayons yeah. i think <laughs> mm-hmm. they so they, they want to draw the full layout of the studio yeah wait but where is he sitting in relation to okay right. got it Perfect. exactly yeah. I, don't want, I don't want them to be left out i want them to feel like they're part of this you know so and i look good in crayon we are left uh <laughs> what is that left or right on your radio dial yeah yes, there it is yes, are there, there radio go. dials anymore I, I doubt it mine are i mean I, well probably in here probably in here Hey, Kyle, can you open that door and see if I'm actually broadcasting? Of course. Because I turn this thing off and I don't want to, you know, (laughs) I'm pretty sure we're broadcasting. I just want to make sure. Are we good? Okay, we're good. We are actually broadcasting. uh, We're live. All this for nothing. We, uh. I would say crisis averted, but we are on the air. (laughs) So (laughs) so it's just getting started. So what, what's, uh, what's everybody's, what? There was something I was going to grab in the lobby, but I'll do that after the break if I don't forget, because I think it'd be fun to, uh, there's, <laughs> there's a thing we did in the studio at our last meeting for Thanksgiving, where we put all of our questions in a bucket and they're like, Thanksgiving oh, tradition questions. Yeah. Oh. And I think that would be funny for us to absolutely uh, make <laughs> really yes. dumb stories about their questions. So, oh. And, and the winner, whoever makes the dumbest, funniest story. Is going to get a Wiley's T-shirt. Oh no! Since I since I have a hell of a time giving them away on the radio show, <laughs> and I can't today anybody anyway because there's nobody. Nobody's here. here. Right. So uh, we're we're just going to give it to one of you guys, one of you poor suckers. <laughs> it's going yes. on with the Wiley shirt. Yeah. It, it's free though. It's free. Yeah. It's not like you don't have to pay what I paid for them. You're yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I uh, just uh, suck the? Yes. Suck the life you out start of this. Li- you start like that, you can suck whatever you want. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Once again, that's old behavior. I don't live that life anymore. <laughs> yep. You don't need a shirt that bad. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Oh, no. I'll, well, I will never turn down a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Uh, suck away. You know, um, suck away. It's, it's the holiday season, right? Tomorrow officially kicks off the holiday season. And, you know, this is a rough time for a lot of people. That it is. Um, so, with that being said, I want to throw a number out there to you. One eight six six four the letter A detox. That's the treatment center I work at. Our doors are open twenty four seven. If you feel like you need help or whatever, I am here for you. We are here for you. Uh, Lemire Healing Centers, LemireHealingCenters dot com. Come get you some recovery and some love. And some love. Absolutely, Scotty's giving out the loves. Yeah, all about that. Thanks, love. thanks for always bringing us back to reality. Hey, no problem. <laughs> yeah, way to uh, take here, that moment. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just, I mean, just, 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 just in case we... that, that's always a <laughs> yeah. good thing to throw out there because the holidays are definitely a hard time on a lot of people. Absolutely, and, uh, it's another reason to get out and laugh. Yeah, yes, or, you know, or call that number, especially Sometimes if you that don't helps too. call that number. Then come to Wiley's this weekend, yeah, yeah, and then go into treatment. Holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't sober up, then go to 
totally different thing. <laughs> the holidays are really <laughs> tough for me. Yeah, when I I different experience. Yeah, I don't know if that's really good advice to be given out. That was horrible okay. advice, it's, it's, actually. It's just, uh, the best funny. advice was that like phone number, one eight six six four eight. 8 Go back to the phone listen, number. Listen to phone Scotty. Yes. Listen to Scotty. I'm a moron. That's all right. We're good. <laughs> That was a quote from Don Smith saying can, that I am a moron. So can I can I say yes. something? So I actually uh, I I I don't want to say the situation, but I was overhearing someone telling an, a recovering alcoholic that because he was saying that he doesn't drink and he was explaining he was in a program and all sorts of stuff. He was just randomly talking about it and the and the guy who was sitting across from him said, "Yeah, but you could probably still drink though because since mm-hmm. you since you were an alcoholic." And you went through. You know when to stop now. Right. You didn't Your know experience. when to stop. You know when to stop now. Wow. And I and I'm listening to this, and I I just kind of gently walked over and I said, "Hey, don't tell people that, ever, never, ever tell someone that ever." That's and then not, I kind of walked sounds out. Like that sounds like advice somebody would get from Donald Trump. It actually. was that sounds like his some of his presidential advice. Right there. <laughs> well, sure. what it was was a 19 year old. Now that now again, I didn't know the situation at the time. It was a 19 year old. That was giving the talking advice. Talking to like a forty year old. Oh well, yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Oh well he's yeah. lived a full life. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He yes. knows everything. Exactly. Yeah. He's a grown man of nineteen. That's yeah. yeah, like that's I'm like, that's not how addiction works. Well, like you yeah, <laughs> congrats you to... to him for graduating recovery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, here let's let's teach him a lesson. Let's make him shoot up until he's oh, yeah, addicted. there we go. And well, then say he'll his name know right now. what addiction is. Goodness that's gracious. That's Goodness so... gracious. <laughs> yep. I just I don't like teenagers, Scotty. I think that's <laughs> really, really what fair <laughs> enough. I want to crush some dreams. Is that's what right. I want to do. <laughs> well, you can start with the pokeballs. That's really where he's coming from. I, oh, I was playing Pokemon on my on my way in. So who doesn't start with pokeballs? <laughs> Listen, that's where it all starts. It's a good game. It's yeah. where they end it's up. A good the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't want your pokeball shifting. You know, <laughs> no, uncomfortable. No. <sighs> Low hanging pokeballs, <laughs> free and swinging is how I like them. You got to be careful. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. like, well, you don't want to pick the low hanging. No. I mean, it's easier to get to, but there's a reason. And you don't want to ask to choose you either, because that could get scary. Is this the thing that I did not know this was happening? Pokemon themed? Uh... <laughs> no, it's, this show is a uh, potpourri of we want. Yes, it's monkey a, poo. Yeah. <laughs> That's going on the ad. <laughs> Appropriate monkey Is that poo? the mission statement? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's great. That, that is. Next time I do a promo for the show, that's going on there. Beautiful. Uh, let me write that down before I forget to do that. Got, talk amongst yourself. i got to find it. <laughs> talk amongst yourself. <laughs> so I was using my flat iron this morning, yeah. and it was not cooperating. No, I, but thank I, God I feel the like it looks fine. It looks great to me. I, thanks, man. So, I, I mean, know. There's was, a lot of product in here right now. Is that the, what it is? How, what do you use in your hair? <laughs> oh, you oh, man. And so uh, there's a there's a, a pretty okay. Do you use like okay? So do you use a gel or a glue? I you, use a gel and a pomade. Oh, okay. but it's homemade. It's yeah. Homemade pomade. It's homemade, homemade pomade. pomade. Am I popping P-A-L-M. my peas on the air? Probably a little bit. But a little pea popping going on. Yeah, it's P A L M palmade. Palm Palm aid. Palm aid. Right there, Scotty. Monkey poo promo. That's yes. going on there. You have made <laughs> the promo, it. my friend. Love it. <laughs> Uh, okay, it. we're back. So and use a glue, our... use a glue and a gel. Yes, I do whatever it takes. Just like uh, like my recovery, man. It's a yeah. uh, <laughs> it's a full can of aqua. Back. Net. <laughs> <Circles back. laughs> yep. I like the persistence. You want to give the number again? <laughs> yes, it's one eight six six four A detox. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Nailed I know it. you were being sarcastic, know, but no, well, no, the opportunity there. presents itself. I'm marketing my ass off because I'm doing being, it. I was being sarcastic as a joke. Though. Sure, it was jokingly sarcastic. No, oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. God, I love this show. Don. That sounds like I'm a key and peel stick. I have yeah, so much. Like, it's like I'm in my happy place when I'm here. Yeah, that, that's good. That's This show loves you is there, oh. and your hair. Is there yeah. another show that you enjoy, Scotty? I love the Nicolas Cage podcast. Nailed who, it. Who does not? I know, right? I, I wish I could get back on there. You, you should. should. I can. All you have how? to do is say, but hey. you have to, how? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Uh, you have to come to my territory, though, next time. I, oh. I we did an episode here in studio. Yes, now you got to yeah. come to my domain. It's in the basement. We can do that. It's in a it's in a cold basement. Now that it's winter, I'm surprised my equipment's still working because it's freezing down there. Do I get to wear pants uh, this time? I would. Yeah, I know. Last time you didn't, but again, the studio is okay. much warmer. <laughs> well, that's true. That's yeah, I looked like I had polio. I had like a I I sit down there with like a a blanket over my legs. <laughs> I was wearing a hoodie the last time we totally recorded. Did. Yeah, I'm freezing. It's really cold down there. 
Like well, he was the, the only one bundled up. Right, right. <laughs> he had his onesie on and everything. Yeah, everything. I was like, what the hell is going on? Everything. I have a Nicolas Cage onesie. Does it have the feet? Does it, does it no, it's a giant eyebrow. <laughs> that that's, that's, that's all it is. In the middle. <laughs> that's all it is. It's just in the yeah. eyebrow and dentures. Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, I will have to get over there because you you usually record on Sunday nights, right? I I can fluctuate. Okay, it doesn't have to be Sundays. Your schedule's okay. not that locked in, is what you're no, saying? No, right? No, it's I, I as long as it gets done. Yeah, I just need to get it done. I release episodes on Mondays, so well, we we should pick a movie then. Agreed. Okay, we'll pick them. Not right now. We don't have to pick one. Wait, <laughs> Listen, th- your show. I'm letting you guide it. Just, so just, you tell me. Just think. Sit there quietly and think about it. Okay, and we'll get back. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> Never in a million years did I think uh, I'd be watching the movie that we watched that night. The Guarding Tess. Yes. That's the movie that Scott watched. And, oh, I've uh, heard of it. I, don't... I got to tell you, good. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah. It was not a bad movie. It, I, I mean, I'm not, like, clamoring to watch it again, but it's, I mean, it was pretty good. Yeah, I'm never going to see it friendly. again. Kid-friendly? I mean, once oh, was that's enough. Why I've never seen it then. Yeah, it's a, it's a kid-friendly <laughs> movie, for sure. Uh, although, randomly drops an F-bomb. Yes. This is out of nowhere. Which shot it up F-bomb to PG-13. Whoa, okay. Yeah, yeah, the movie yeah. would have been PG, I think, without literally that one F-bomb. Wow. So I wonder if it was intentional to get a higher yeah, rating. He just, yeah, he didn't want just kids watching. Let's get it. They yeah. wanted like a higher yeah, rating. Yeah, so they, that, that's, yep. <laughs> just drop one F-bomb. That's all that's you got to do. That's that's I, need. I think about doing that on this show all the time. <laughs> just one. Just one. Oh, I've been on here when I things got dicey. That. Oh, yeah, it's happened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on here when things got dicey. It's happened. I think we we had one episode where we had a call in guest that I, we had a hard time understanding. I don't know if you, I can't even think of his name right now, but he, he dropped one I didn't even know. But we just kept kept rolling with the show, and I got to listen and listening to the recording later. I was like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Someone was, missed yeah. on the button that day, huh? Yeah, right. Well, the, the thing is, is he's a. Uh, I wish I could think of his name. Great guy, really nice guy. He's out in L.A. He does uh, he does impressions. He's a Japanese guy. He does impressions out there. So uh, anyway, he's a hilarious guy, and uh, his impressions are uh, I think purposely terrible because basically all he does is he says who he is in a real deep voice. You know? <laughs> so it's not Dane Cook, is what we're no, saying. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, because mm. he actually has talent. Oh, this okay, guy. yeah. Not, not, so it's not Dane Cook. He's actually this guy makes me laugh. <laughs> Dane Cook jab at 2017? Yeah. Nailed it. Why not? <laughs> Nailed it. You know? it. When is not a good time to jab at Dane Cook? Exactly. Look at that. Hey, bad publicity we'll is good topical. publicity. Yeah. You know, Here on the live radio. We'll keep it yeah. topical. Yep. Oh. Anyway, so how about that OJ? No, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you played football. Uh, yeah, what? yeah, that's that's weird. Oh, should we hit a news story? I mean, do we have mm-hmm. anything? Did, did we come together for a specific reason? Or just it seems like a I hot said, hey, let's, to, 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 the, the potpourri of monkey poo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm unemployed, so I was like, yeah, hey, I can do better. Hey, my work closed early today, so I'm like, hey, I'll swing on by. got no problem. If An you go to uh, LemireHealingCenters.com, <laughs> 1-866-4-A-Detox. <laughs> Um, we can help you with that loneliness. Man. There we go. Don't don't detach. Don't suppress and detach. Don't detach. Detox. Oh yeah, I'm there. Ooh, is, you got a new slogan. Is, yeah. I got a now, new promo. We're you trading. Got a new okay, I like man, that. This is awesome. Don't detach. <laughs> detox. Wow. Oh, okay. We we covered this story uh, a few weeks ago. We talked about Miss Bum Bum Brazil pageant. Oh, Were you guys? Yes. Was that with you? Was yes. that with I, you too? Okay. I was not here, but so I heard it. Oh, okay. Do tell. Okay. Uh, well, uh, basically, it's just a, it's a it's a contest in Brazil. It's a beauty contest for, for the best buns. Got it. This is Miss Makes Bum sense. Bum Brazil. Got it. Uh, the winner of the pageant for Brazil's best butt used the occasion to come out front and center with her political beliefs. Uh, on Monday, uh, Rosie Oliveira nailed it. Yeah, yeah probably not. Uh, was <laughs> named Miss Bum Bum Brazil, a title given to the woman perceived to have the top bottom. In the whole country, the top bottom. Hmm. <laughs> That's so I see cute what they, that did, they there. did there. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, the 28 year old model and reporter, and a reporter from the state of uh, Amazonas, beat out 26 other finalists for the coveted honor, including 15 finalists at Monday's competition in Sao Paulo. Because you know, why not? Although the Miss Bum Bum is does the Miss Bum Bum. The, I'm, the pageant <laughs> is designed is by design focused on physical attributes. Uh, Miss Rosie Oliveira 
uh, used the event to make people think about the future of the country. During her onstage segment, she came, came out with a Brazilian flag and the words, Fora Tamer, uh, get out Tamer, who is apparently their uh, president, Brazilian president, who took position in August 2016. Uh, after the, former, the previous president was impeached, he was charged with corruption. Uh, the new president was charged with corruption in June. Uh, since then, that uh, that slogan has become uh, a big slogan to try to get get rid of him. So, uh, Miss Bum Bum <laughs> uh, gets political. <laughs> so, okay, so this was based off of physical attributes, correct? right? She's well, like, yeah. I am not going to crack that walnut with my ass cheeks. I'm here to talk about right. yes. this yes. president. <laughs> yes, it, it was. <laughs> It was not the best forehead. It was not the best cranium, capa- cranium right. capacity in Brazil. It was the best butt. Best butt. So, yes. So, yeah. well, I guess Which, whatever platform you got to use, I suppose. We do not yeah. pay you to think with your ass <laughs> yeah. cheeks. Yeah, but I was wondering. I wonder if she was shaking her butt while she was talking about this. I wonder if she applauded herself with those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you make it clap. Yeah. Make it clap. <laughs> <laughs> And how does she? How does she do the interview? I mean, is she turned like with her neck halfway around so you get the winning butt. You would have while, to, while yeah. she's talking. I mean, she's definitely not giving you the the non-winning side, right? Right. right. I know? mean, how do they wear their sash to expose their butt? Right. You know? And you can't be like eyes up here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. So you just won the cup. No, I'm looking where you deserve it. <laughs> if they're gonna name it the best, I want to see it. <laughs> Absolutely. Please you know, direct you, your lawsuits at Don yeah. specifically, <laughs> not anyone else on the show. I mean, you, you can talk politics all you want, but if you just got named the best butt, that's what you should be showing. You don't have to talk about it because we just did. We had a whole contest to talk about it. A but you're contest. on the stage after yeah. being named best butt. That should be at least everyone's visual focus. There you go. Yeah, she's uh, quite the cheeky lady. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a beagle in Tynesdale, England is dogged with the annoying ailment with an annoying ailment, uh, a Donald Trump stuck to his ear, uh, not the actual president, but a cyst that looks amazingly like the 45th president. Uh, Jade Robinson said her two year old beagle chief developed the cyst after dirt got in his ears. Uh, she said as, as he has the very distinctive long ears of a beagle, a lot of time scraping the ground, sniffing for lovely smells, much like Trump. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, this leads to ears picking up a lot of dirt. Uh, she added that while she tries to keep Chief's ears clean on a daily basis, general cleaning can only go so far. It's so realistic. And this poor dog has a Trump-shaped cyst. She, she really thought outside the box on the name well, Chief. Well, yeah. She should have <laughs> named, you should, like, she like named it America. That's what I have a problem with. We have a Trump-shaped cyst that's causing problems. She should have named the dog America. I was like, yeah, I think we have a problem with the wrong thing. Why did she name the dog Chief? <laughs> that's, I let's let's get that, more that's, creative yeah. than that. Yeah. I mean, come on. Big fan yeah, of Jaws. Well, that, that's, that's offensive I also, Native Americans, I also too. appreciate that they used uh, dogged in the story. Dogged, yes. Yeah. yeah they, they, writers are so clever. They're good at it. That's why they're doing that. Did you just spill the ashes again? <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. Oh, okay. <laughs> that poor guy, man. Yep. He, I don't He's probably been touched more now than he was when he was yeah, alive. That, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stephen yeah. Andrews. So, time out. There's a... Okay, so when you guys talk about ashes, I wasn't even really sure what you guys were talking oh, about. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's, there's, now that's... I think that you're referring to human remains. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Well, those let's talk right about there, that. Th- those are the ashes of a former general manager. <laughs> Hey? Of the station. For some hey? reason, he wanted to be a part of every show. I think that's why none of our equipment works with sure. Dan, because it's cursed. Yeah. Because somebody a couple weeks ago <laughs> got into the air. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> and it spilled all over me. Because we're, yeah, we're, <laughs> like his voice over. didn't used to be this deep. So there's <laughs> actually. Uh... Yeah, so Scotty and I were talking, and all of a sudden he breaks in with, hey, somebody want a chili cook-off. <laughs> oh, no. Because it's in a little chili cook-off trophy, which is kind oh, of a tough is. place to it put is. it. Is and that, there should be a if you're going to have the ashes of, you of know, if you're going to have human remains yes, on your shelf, be a sign. The, yeah, there should be a label. There yeah. should be a hey, hey, don't snort this. This is a per- person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, yeah. said yeah. an urn would have been apropos. Right. Yeah. Something yeah. Along yeah. Of, yeah. Of, yeah. A loose, a loose right. medical bottle. You know. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. In a, in a chili cook-off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is uh, wow. I mean, he's yeah. so important. They put him next to a box that says scrap paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's no wonder the studio is cursed. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> not, not happy about that. Thanks for that. How, how, long, how, long is, how long has that been there? 
Uh, since I've been here, it's it's been here every time you've been here. Are, well, are you freaked out now? Are you? I'm not freaked oh, okay, out. It's okay. just it's weird. I see dead people. It, it is. It's weird. It is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. It, it I mean, why not put him good. in the GM's office? I, That's where he would have been. Make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. You can yep. hear in there, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sprinkle him around. Just put him in the carpet, <laughs> like like magic carpet cleaner. There it is. <laughs> You'll you guys are doing it later, but you'll never get it all. <laughs> no, so, yeah, no, you're right. Ever. Wright State is doing some some renovations. I walked in. There's going to be a sushi place. Really? Right up, right when you walk in that top door, whatever that. So what way you're is. saying is, student union is going to stink like raw fish. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. That is fantastic. And when I walked in, somebody was playing piano really, what's that, what's really badly. About, <laughs> I'm just picturing a blind man walking into a bar and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Afro man. <laughs> <laughs> was that juice quote Afro Man? The, the Reverend Afro Man? Um, but no, yeah, there's going to be a sushi place. And like I said, when I walked in, there was somebody playing piano very loudly and terribly. Well, yeah, we'll have that. Well, John Tesh is here today. <laughs> is that so. what it is? John Tesh. All right, well, uh, I'm, I'm going to get that. I, I have some music queued up already. Is, is it, Pot- it Potterfield? <laughs> How did you get? <laughs> I, love, I you guys, love that band. You guys are great. <laughs> all five of their songs well, they're, are they're amazing. All, well, there are more than that. Okay. That's, they all that's, won. That's, that's all off the, the album that that, uh, that I happen, happen to have on here, and I've been promoting and kind of got stuck promoting those. Do you want me to play a different one? Hey, I'll, I'll I love get you, we'll, we'll get okay. you my music, so that way you can... Uh, you can start promoting that. Your music? Of course. You have music? I do. Awesome. Have you ever seen The Never Indian Story? <laughs> it's been a long time. He goes, I betray you. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> All right. Well, let, let, uh, let me head through the uh, comedy rundown real quick, and I'll play a little Potter's Field. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. And Scotty, can, Scotty can headbang. And, you know, which actually that's kind of neat because it's like you're brushing the walls when you do that <laughs> with your. You should, maybe you should just play uh, Alice and Chains the Rooster, and then I'll just. There you go. I, actually, uh, Don Potter, the the lead singer of Potter's Field, founder of Potter's Field, is uh, a huge Alice and Chains fan. I love. I love. Yeah. So Potter's Alice Field is is in relation to his name. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, he's, he's a good good friend of mine. Good guy. Okay. Tell me. 
Nothing brings people together quite like the movies, and every week, Aaron Lopez wants you to join him in a discussion about the latest and greatest in the world of film. So grab a drink, grab some popcorn, and get comfy. Come join Aaron and friends every Thursday at The Drive-In, presented by Eventide Entertainment. All right, we are back on the Life Radio Show, and we are uh, we are picking crap out of a bucket. <laughs> yeah. And he means that very literally. Yes, yes very literally. They are crap, crap, crap questions. I do a bucket. <laughs> Way to get that one out again. <laughs> Pro broadcaster. All right, so uh, what what we're going to do, this is our uh, questions from a bucket that was randomly left on the studio table out there. Uh, this is a pumpkin bucket. It's actually, a, they called it a pumpkin bucket. It's a jack-o'-lantern bucket. It has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. This is a Halloween bucket full of Thanksgiving questions. So it's already starting off wrong. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of these questions are very um, interesting. <laughs> Something like that, yes. I was trying to be uh, diplomatic. Well, why? Just interesting is the way to put it. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, we will. What does a gravy boat mean? <laughs> so, we're going to. What does it mean to you? Right, exactly. Because that gravy boat means something different to everybody. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Google will give you all kinds of links to gravy boat. Gosh, I'm going to pick that question, too, to read. Oh, you, you, you guys can you guys can do right. stories. I'll, I can just read the ones that I think are the funniest. Okay, I, okay. Well, whoever makes me laugh the most. No. <laughs> We're, we're, whoever comes up with the most creative story, I, I guess there really aren't any rules. Whoever I like the best is getting a freaking shirt. That's how it's, <laughs> that's how it's going to go. Just give me the damn shirt, yeah, Okay, Scotty, you ain't All getting right. a shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Better be sleeveless. Oh, well, we we got some scissors I'm or kidding. a knife around here somewhere. We're good to go. All right, uh, who wants to start? Who wants to get us kicked off answering their, uh, their random Thanksgiving out of a Halloween bucket question? I'll go. Uh, Scotty has been chosen and volunteered so this is fitting actually people who know me will get a kick out of this does it have anything to do with that number you keep <laughs> <laughs> what you mean the one eight six six four a detox that's the one yeah. lemire healing centers one eight six six four a detox what's that for a <laughs> detox lemire healing centers it's not a place of recovery it's a place of discovery oh wow Man, all kinds of slogans today. That's fantastic. Yeah. Is that their actual slogan, or did you just come up with that? No, actually, uh, some of the counselors came up with that. Oh, we okay. all just, uh, you know, it's a combined effort in there. We're, okay. we're a team. That's good. That's Teamwork good. makes the dream work. And I don't know where that one started. <laughs> makes but, the dreams work. <laughs> you <know? laughs> did you pull that out of the bucket? <laughs> <laughs> you pulled it out of the bucket. We should have done that. By the way, this bucket we should have done immediately upon sitting down. Yeah, just I, yeah I think so. This will be everyone so. sticking around for another hour, right? This is, this is going to take know, some we time. Because the second hour, all I was going to do is play. Why not? A, uh, because I can throw that phone number out again for another hour. <laughs> That's yeah. true. You can. What was the number again? One eight six six four. The letter A. Detox. detox. All right. So, uh, all right, Scotty, hit, hit us with your with your with your Thanksgiving answer to a Halloween themed thanksgiving question question <laughs> because it's even on orange paper which is it is kind of, yeah. yes. okay go ahead yeah have you ever shoplifted during black friday shopping <laughs> see what had happened was um, here comes the excuses is what you're saying well also i'm gonna say it is hard to find a job at walmart with a shoplifting charge on your record <laughs> from walmart oh i think i heard about this story yes before. um Black Friday is always my favorite day in retail, especially when you're loss prevention um, security, because who least to suspect thieves than Lost Walmart's prevention. own security? Sure. That is true. That is true. Yeah, man. I, uh, yeah. So you were in the, now is this, is this when you got busted by a fellow comic? Yes. <laughs> That's the one I heard of. Yes. Um, you know, I don't want to mention his name, but Michael Wells. Yeah. <laughs> was, name, Mike. He was he goes, an amazing goes, asset goes, protection say, associate at Walmart. Because I don't want to say his name, but his initials are Michael Wells. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He hates it when I tell that story. He absolutely hates it because he, uh, he said he felt it, like I mean, a jerk. Yeah, yeah. I was like, nah, man. I, you know, I put you in that position. Right, right, right. So Way don't go, feel Scotty. bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I knew I was officially a drug addict. Now, is this before he knew you? Oh, no. We worked together. I trained him. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's even better. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, there's nothing more uh, proud. Uh, there's a lot of pride in that being carted in front of all your Walmart associates in handcuffs. That's Ooh, yeah, that, that, that would be a moment. Did it oh, feel like? When, did it feel like when Obi Wan got beat by Darth Vader? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, you th- you think that would have been my rock bottom, but no, I wasn't done nope. yet. <laughs> no, but wait, <laughs> there's more. Started. Yeah, but wait, yeah, it's like a Billy Mays. <laughs> but wait, yeah. And now today, I have this phone number: one eight six six four eight detox. That that will help you out. <laughs> Absolutely, you, know. you don't have to live that life, right? You you don't have to get carted out. You know, and that was the Walmart thing. Like I, I did, I did crap like that to support my right. my drug habit. Sure. But um, I don't know what's going on over here. There's all kinds is of weird noises Facebook, with my your phone. Your Facebook Live is vibrating. On yeah, apparently now. that is. Oh, look, it's the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scott. Yeah. You, you want a cruise. Come down to the <laughs> station to claim it. Uh, that's funny. All right. Who, who's next? Oh, who's I have next? a list of things I was going to Oh, man. Just Kyle has a list of things. It's going it's to be tough to, to beat that one, quite honestly. Uh, do you want to just go through the list and you guys can answer this as you please? Who's next? Um, yeah. I, I, go ahead. Go, we'll answer as you, as you please. Okay. So, first one. Uh, should we liberate the turkeys? Hashtag in turkey murder. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer that personally. No. Okay. Yeah. Ever. Because they're great for three days yeah. with turkey giblets, turkey gravy. I mean, every turkeys are just delicious. They're my Absolutely. favorite, favorite, Absolutely. probably my favorite thing to eat other than steak. Yeah. So I'm all for killing turkeys by the masses. Uh, no, absolutely. And and the tryptophan helps you sleep, too. Nap time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my next question here is, have you seen the Headless Horseman? Uh, Dash, he stole my pumpkin. Now, I wonder if it's the same cu- pumpkin that we're... Uh that we're pulling questions my out guess because that uh, would be that would be weird to have that question come out of the pumpkin i actually seen by... the headless horseman in the transgender bathroom over here <laughs> that... different heads yeah. oh. okay, stay, oh, yeah. stay with my mistake <laughs> again direct all your losses uh, uh, that, 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 that one was and... scotty that's <laughs> that that not my real name. number for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one eight six six four a detox <laughs> Uh, All right, go on, go on. I have a couple more. It's like here. the My Pillow commercial year <laughs> on the radio. My Pillow, yeah, MyPillow dot com. <laughs> I know it, right? Yeah. Uh, if you could be a turkey, would you? I'll, Don, I'll go with you first. Absolutely. No. Absolutely no, I not. Would. Yeah, I, I no. wouldn't because uh, you know they only they're they're not around for long. No, they're not. And then their food, which I mean, I I love to be part of somebody like that, but uh, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I want to be. Yeah, he's like, like I, I want to be inside somebody, yeah. <laughs> not like that. but not like that. So see, like, see, that's Scotty, an interesting Scotty turn. Had to go and just put it right. Yeah. Out. <laughs> I was trying to be a little more subtle with that. You know. Well, speaking of subtle, where's the uh, gravy boat? What does gravy boat mean to you? <laughs> I think that's. I think that's a question for. Uh, <laughs> uh, it depends on what population I'm roaming with, as far as their. Sexual preferences, sure. <laughs> or if I'm on a set of a particular adult film movie, a gravy sure. boat means something totally different <laughs> sure. than it does at uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, sure. You know, but it, from what I understand, it's tasty. Uh, I do have th- yes. <laughs> regardless. <laughs> yeah, regardless. regardless. I, I, during Thanksgiving, <laughs> it's tasty. I don't. I've Listen. never been on the receiving end of the other one. <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you were a turkey, yeah. what, what would gravy boat mean to you? <laughs> Okay, so I, in thought. Yeah. <laughs> I do have three more here. Um, this is probably my favorite. Uh, should there be more Thanksgiving songs? Are there any Thanksgiving I, songs? Thongs? Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing yes, one right yes. now, actually. Yes and yes. <laughs> Thanksgiving songs. Yeah. That's fantastic. I think I have it on backwards. Though. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, yeah. I'm really yes, uncomfortable yes, right yes. now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there are any Thanksgiving songs, but I know Jingle Bells was started out as a Thanksgiving song. Random fact: Is that true? Really? really? Yeah, that's that's what? weird. Yeah, so they changed the words to make it Christmassy. So dashing through the snow meant that they were running for their lives. Yes, yes, yes. away from um, the white man who was yeah. trying to kill them, which was Impossibly. actually remade as Iron Maiden's "Run to the Hill." <laughs> 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 okay. You should play that during the next. That one. was yes. beautiful. Uh, I probably trail. have it on there so. Uh, I I feel no, like I, I feel like uh, somebody in this room wrote this one. Uh, if you were to quote pie a WWSU DJ slash director in the face, who would it be? Parentheses, it's a cream pie. 
What's uh, the gentleman's name in the ashes over here? (laughs) (laughs) What does green pie mean to you? I also like they put the word pie in quotation marks. Right, yeah, because what is it? Pie. Pie. All right, last but not least, if you were a weather condition slash forecast, interesting distinction there, if you were a weather condition slash forecast, what would you be and why? Mm, that's, that's probably that's the most Scotty, creative that's question. That's Scotty's question, I think. Is that, is that your question? The, so you weren't even paying attention to the question. If man. you were a weather condition <laughs> slash forecast, what would you be and why? Well, I would be a, a rolling cumulonimbo stratus cloud <laughs> bringing a hurricane of love. <laughs> there it is. Down. <laughs> On to one eight six six four a detox lemurehealingcenters dot com. I thought you were going to start off with a rolling brown out. <laughs> Just put that in the gravy boat. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, that's all I got. So. All right. Well, where where are we? I think I think we're up to Jess now. Yes. Sadly enough. Yeah. Get used to disappointment. <laughs> Again, you knew my parents, obviously. <laughs> all right, go ahead. PTSD. Uh, I tell you what. I'm a, I, I, this question is a little tricky, but we're going to roll with it. Are you in favor of pecan or pumpkin pie? And to my, my opinion, I really got nothing. But I, I knew a comic. I don't know if you ever heard of him, Bobcat Goldthwait. Sure. He, had a, he yeah. had a strong opinion. He was like, I really want some pumpkin pie. Ah, anything for it. Anything. So, I mean, he's more of a pumpkin pie guy. Me? <laughs> Not so much. I, 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 that's not my kind I of pie. I wish Travis Charles was I, I'm a cake. <laughs> would, would Travis be? Well, Travis, he, Travis he was on live here, uh, but he's he, not. He does. That was a pretty legit yeah, Bobcat. That, that was good. That was Thank good. You. That was uh, a legit Bobcat. But, uh, yeah, I'm a cake guy, given the choice. I p- Pumpkin, pecan, and go, just cover whipped cream. Go with cake. That's all my right, theory. All right, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, all things are good covered in whipped cream. Yes, especially um, different pies. Spe- yes. Speaking, yes, yes. Uh, speaking of covered with whipped cream, uh, my question that I that I drew out is: What are you doing for Thanksgiving this year? <laughs> I will be covered in whipped cream. <laughs> great segue into that. I yeah. appreciate it. I and everyone didn't, didn't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even see that coming. I and I you- may, I may cream pie a director. <laughs> <laughs> and by director, he means yeah, himself. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say for sure, but may have. This is oh, my goodness. show. Oh, uh, all right. So, who do we think gets that one? I man, I don't know. Well, I have to be one of them too, because I wasn't part of it. I think you won. Uh, no, no. Yeah, I think we're all winners here. I I, th- I think we're all winners. You, all three of you get a friggin' t-shirt. Well, How, about that? That. How about that? How about that? And now he's in the red. Now he's in the red. Wiley's is broke again, <laughs> but you guys can advertise for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll wear it at the next show. You put a phone right. number on there, and I'll just scream it at the top of my lungs, like one eight six six four eight detox. Two two four joke is another good. one. Oh, that is yeah, a good one. Yeah, there it is. A, yeah. Not or, to be confused or with com. Yeah. What's that? No, no. I already <laughs> plugged it, man. You missed goes, it. Uh, you already missed you it. Plug, you plugged the, the website as I was giving their number. <laughs> 224 So they're going to do both at once. Different numbers, Scotty. Different numbers. What facility is this? <laughs> yes. If you need help, call 224 <laughs> joke. Yeah. Uh. Now that I I had some good uh, I had some good really stupid stories I was gonna love it I was gonna come up with and I got I gotta I gotta dig my way through to find them. Uh, let's see. There's uh... so while you're doing that, can I tell you the one that has always stuck out to me? <laughs> sure. Remember the toe, the toe oh, story the toe up in Alaska in the in the hotel. Yeah. At the yeah for the drink. I still to this day cannot get that out of my head. <laughs> what you, you want to go try it? Don't you? There's a drink you can buy up there that has a toe. Yes, it's, it's the, a, it is a, a drink. Uh, uh, what preserved is some a preserved, preserved is a, toe. Is a human toe that they'll put in your drink up in Alaska. It's it's I guess how do they keep people, people from stealing it? Somebody stole it. That's yeah. what the story was. About. Oh, I was somebody like, stole well, it. Yeah, that was me. Like and, <laughs> obviously, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to steal the toe. Here's the kicker. They had a back. <laughs> Here's kicker. the kicker. Get it? Nice. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, they had a backup toe, but they didn't like it as much. Who's 
the bartender didn't like the backup toe as much as Can the you primary be, toe. He didn't like it with jam on it. I'm like, do you, do you get to be picky when it comes to like which, which human which toe you're going to stick in somebody's drink? How, where did they get the toes from? That would be like in, that'd be like in uh, football. Well, when they ask you if you want to be an organ donor. Yes, you could, um, you could lose you a could toe. You could toe. lose a toe. I mean, Most of them are diabetics. Do, is, does there become a toe controversy like in <laughs> football <laughs> quarterbacks? <laughs> the backup, not really bringing like the yeah, starter. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, okay, here, here's here's one I kind of liked when I saw it. A uh, a woman in Devon, England, uh, is breathing easier now that her missing pet skunk is home and sa- safe and sound. Uh, Sarah Harris, 40 years old, said her beloved skunk Dottie disappeared in early july when they were camping because when you go camping you have to take your pet skunk that's a rule uh harris immediately reported the missing animal but had no luck finding dotty despite some occasional sightings by other people people that saw a skunk uh weeks passed and harris still hadn't sniffed out dotty's whereabouts <laughs> <laughs> like, he looks these, over at me <laughs> these clever writers man they got it it's, uh, it's not quite the onion but but they're doing it <laughs> <laughs> well it's a skunk it smells kind of you know sure that's close to an onion. Yeah. Uh, that is, until she reached out to local clairvoyant named Becky Willoughby. Oh, she no. felt that Dottie, uh, Becky Willoughby felt that uh, Dottie was near a garden shed. Very specific uh, clairvoyant, apparently. Spoiler alert, the clairvoyant uh, stole the skunk. <laughs> yeah, yes. More days went by until Harris got a call from a man who had seen a Facebook post about the missing skunk. Uh, he took a picture of Dottie and sent me a message said that the skunk was in his garden underneath his shed. So there you go. Spoiler That's, alert. Yeah. Clairvoyant, wow. stole the clairvoyant the skunk. stole the skunk and shoved it under a shed. <laughs> <laughs> Which as, is a as metaphor the psychic for something. Sense, Dottie was I'm under sure. a garden shed. Uh, Harris said, all of a sudden I saw her. She edged forward and a friend managed to grab hold of her because apparently it was a skunk that really didn't want to be captured. Uh, it was as if she had never been away. It wasn't a perfect reunion. Uh, of course, uh, Dottie actually sprayed Harris, <laughs> but she seemed to cool down. <laughs> but she seemed to cool down by the time they were driving home. Uh, Harris said Dottie curled up on a blank in a in the a car in the car in a blanket. Uh, I had to give her a bath. She smelled very earthy. She's a skunk. She smelled earthy. She sm- uh, earthy smell of skunk that uh, just sprayed her. That- <laughs> I, so I <laughs> have a. <laughs> I I do have a story. I have a story. Somehow do, do I have, you have a story. A pet skunk? I have okay. a story. Okay, let let's hear it. So when I was living in a I was living in an apartment in Bellbrook. It was my wife and I's first it was before we were married, but it was our first time living together. Got an apartment in Bellbrook and uh there was like a bus stop right at the end of the like at the entrance of the apartment complex. So kids are always out there playing. So one day we hear these kids just screaming and laughing like more than usual. So Justine gets up and like looks out the window and goes, Kyle, the kids are playing with a skunk. <laughs> I go, what? And I get up and look. The kids were chasing a skunk around, and the skunk was stopping, and they would freeze, and they would start to walk towards the skunk. The skunk would run at them, like run underneath them, and then run away, and the skunk was playing with the kids. It was a skunk that was just running in circles, running between the kids' legs, and the kids were having a blast. As far as I'm wow. aware, never sprayed them, didn't do anything. That's funny. So there you go. <laughs> that is a real that, thing that happened. That was somebody's pet skunk. That's. I mean, it had to be domesticated, right? Like I would imagine. So, Either that or it was just a really... That was Dottie. Yeah. Made it all the way to Bellbrook, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before making it back to, to a garden shed to spray her owner. Just another reason I'm not a fan of millennials from that story. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> well, in the millennials defense, we got to look at the parents' uh, yeah. role in this situation, yeah. too. And we also have to remember that Harris, the skunk owner, was 40 years old. Well, and that we are watching uh we are watching this take place from the window of our apartment and just going like yeah, what are you going to do? Right. You know, like, we're not, not gonna, doing anything. Those are my damn they'll kids. Learn, nope. They'll learn. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh Okay, one, one more uh, one more story, and then we got to take a break. Uh, Navy crew that might, that made giant drawings in, of penises uh, oh, while yes. flying oh, over Okanagan County uh, <laughs> in job. Washington uh, will be held accountable for their obscene actions, according to Navy officials. Uh, the drawings appeared Thursday evening, quickly attracting the attention from locals like Ramon Duran. Uh, Duran told the Spokesman Review newspaper he was running errands when he saw a jet start making designs in the sky and con- with contrails. 
uh, after it, after it made the circles at the, he said, after it made the circles at the bottom, I knew it, what it was. And I started laughing. It was pretty <laughs> funny to see that you don't expect to see something like that. Other people weren't as excited. One mother told uh, oh. local station KREM cream. Huh? <laughs> she was, <laughs> she was upset. The drawings might force her to have a conversation about male anatomy. She wasn't prepared for, oh my gosh. which didn't say, didn't say she had kids, <laughs> just said she wasn't prepared for a conversation about male anatomy. <laughs> so I don't know why she wasn't prepared. Yeah. <laughs> What if the Christians were like, oh, Jesus is back? <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. We are all getting it now. Yeah. I, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll second. Well, I'm a part of that one. You can <laughs> sue me, too. I'm, I'm with it. <laughs> the, uh, only, the only thing I could think of if I'm the commanding officer being ex-military, I'd be like, I got to send you two characters to Top Gun. You know? <laughs> you get out there and play volleyball right now. <laughs> that's a promotion for being creative yeah, on air. Exactly, exactly. Come on, Goose. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, I think that's wonderful. I think they did a good job. Yeah, right. I, I, Hopefully they'll get into I enjoyed it. Trouble. It'll I, be non. I'd love to see our servicemen have a sense of humor like hey, man. that. Yeah. It'll be non-punitive. They won't get in any type of real trouble. Well, I don't, I don't know about that because and, you know uh, Louis C.K. is all kind of crap for showing his. Sure. I mean, they drew a picture one in the sky. <laughs> Could that be? Yeah, but look what Jim Gaffigan's doing to hot pockets, and nobody is saying anything about <laughs> nobody saying nothing. <laughs> I would, uh, and you should see what I do to these donuts, man. If oh. they ever get a voice, I'm screwed because <laughs> I, am, I I do not treat these donuts well at all. The the question is, uh, jelly or <laughs> or uh, more of a glazed. Sounds like some, glazed, sounds like uh, we yeah. need some Pottersfield <laughs> glazed, glazed glazed before or after, Scotty. That's the question that's on everybody's yeah. minds. The question that's on my mind right now. Is is do I, do I disappoint a couple friends by not play, paying playing their pre recorded interview? And do we keep this show going with with us four? I love this flow that's going for another freaking hour. I love this flow that's going. If I had a nickel for every friend or woman I've disappointed in my life, I'd be close to a millionaire. <laughs> you know, when you started out, I think th- I thought you were doing I a thought sling you were blade. Go <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you were doing <laughs> a sling blade. <laughs> 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 I'll 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 like them fried potatoes. I like them biscuits and I like them biscuits and mustard. Okay. <laughs> 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 I like right, the idea well, like that. Well, uh, uh, apparently, the Facebook audience wants us to keep it going. All right. Oh, there you go. I think if there's a Facebook Live audience that is double what we have have as radio listeners <laughs> probably we what's the number up to Scott? what's your number <laughs> probably lower <laughs> what's your number scotty oh i know one eight six six four 486 detox, detox. <laughs> beautiful i'm so proud of you we guys got scotty's you. number yeah okay uh, <laughs> that's his direct cell that's yeah that's it <laughs> that goes straight to scotty <laughs> oh man i i will i will have to play uh for for Tyler and Brandon, I, I, I love you guys. I'm going to have to play your interview later because we're going to keep rolling so long as these knuckleheads can stay in here, and I think we're good to go. I, I will get your interview out on the air, and it will go out as a special edition of the podcast. I promise you. But in the meantime, uh, everybody get out uh, sometime this weekend and get to YouTube and check out TBTV. Which is Tyler and Brand Tyler Tyler Wise and Brandon Berry's uh, sketch comedy show, which is freaking hilarious. Anyway, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna play uh, I'm gonna play a little uh, Potter's Field. Can you believe it? <laughs> Shut up. Wow! Hey, Grace, yeah. I can't believe that. And, and Who's that, be- Don? <laughs> uh, you're gonna find out. Tyler. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we will be back here shortly. <laughs>
Are you into making music, videos, or podcasts? Are you a local comedic talent in need of some much-needed publicity? Are you a behind-the-scenes professional interested in audio, video production, graphic design, and public relations? Eventide Entertainment is actively seeking talents, clients, and professionals to help our business grow into something truly special. And we want you to be one of those. For more information, go to facebook.com slash Eventide Entertainment. Or send us an email at eventideent at gmail.com. Wednesdays on Eventide, Robert Yetter and Mike Shea sit down and throw albums at each other, talking about them, picking them apart, ripping them a new one. All different artists, all different genres, all different levels of suckage. It's Track Record, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. on the Eventide Podcast B. For more information... Go to eventideent.com. All right, we're gonna ha- we're gonna have to get started without. Uh, where are we? I- I'm hearing all kinds of weird, random noises now. Was, was that you? <laughs> I don't think it was me. No. Okay. Okay. It's okay. I'm checking to make sure the ashes are still yeah, there. Something's on. So, I, hear, yeah. I hear it too. Something's on. Yeah. Well, Jess is, Jess was gone, and I was worried because there he is. He's right there. You know the, the ashes. <laughs> I want to make sure they were still there. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't take go the snort with them. the rest of them, <laughs> or I, go flush them. Just I so think, that he's, I think he's coming in. He's he's okay, taking he's the ashes in. with him. All right, all right. There he is. There he is. <laughs> he looks uh, very frantic. The gang's all together again. <laughs> did Did you not want to go down to the transgender rooms? Is that what's? Uh... Oh, oh no, I got. I was looking for a a vending uh, machine. A, a, a vending machine, oh. and the uh, a nursing student stopped, and she talked to me for like. Five ten minutes. So I, I, so I, I don't know. Yeah. Way just, better, way better than a vending machine. I'm like, oh well, yeah, no, no. And then I said, I'm married. I'll let you know. Oh, it was like that, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, she must have been into bald fat guys. Yeah. Huh. It was it's intriguing. Like, yeah, yeah, she was like, like how, how, how long's hair. it been since your last chemo treatment? <laughs> <laughs> she was, you, you're not very attractive. I'm like, I was gonna well, say you do pretty look pretty a lot like Joe Young. So. Oh, I get up. Old, old Joe Young. Old right. Joe uh, Young. Before, before the, uh, I didn't before know Joe the, before. New before Joe Young. You just want to hug that guy and tell him it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. I get Vincent D'Onofrio from uh, Full Metal Jacket a lot. Too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The fat private yeah. pile. Yeah. What is your major malfunction, <laughs> private pile? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Sorry for the tardiness. What's that? I said sorry for the tardiness. Oh. That's okay. That's okay. It happens. Put it back. No. Oh, you keeping that one? We used a... we we wrote a number on it. Oh, okay, my bad, my so bad. It's, so it's ours now. Okay. And what number did you write on there? Take the whole bucket. <laughs> <laughs> what what number did I write on there, Scott? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, one eight six 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 four a detox. There it is. Nice. What facility gonna... is that again? Oh, uh, not Lemire sure. Lemire Healing uh, Centers in Westchester. No. <laughs> Laverne Cox. <laughs> Who? Isn't Laverne Cox? Isn't that for Orange Is New Black? Nobody knows. Didn't land. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, okay. Do we want more news stories or what What do we want now? Because I was not planning a second hour. I just uh, like I planned the first Can one, I make a quick know? comment? Um, so sure, there's sure. somebody that I've been interacting with. Uh, they, they have uh, some, their kids, they have some issues with uh, dependency and they're, they're trying to get some help. And I just want to let you know that um, you're going to love them to death and you're going to love yourself to death if you don't stop you're you're destroying your own body and your own health by thinking that you can change them and you can't they have to want to change themselves so nothing changes if nothing changes the numbers on there the websites on there do your part and then wash your hands take a deep breath and live your life so th- this is somebody that's trying to help somebody yes. that's yeah because that's yeah. that's, that's a hard, hard thing to that's do hard. uh my oldest brother was uh he spent several years uh, addicted to crack and i'm no joke actually oh yeah I was there. And, i've been there yeah and he uh there there was there was no getting through to him I mean, no no well we was, don't think we're hurting anybody but ourselves right yeah, but it's not until some of the the fog lifts that we were like wow we've directly affected everybody yeah. around us and it, it doesn't um yeah doesn't it's matter. a it's a terrible thing and unfortunately that's about all you can do is give them the information of where they can go and yeah Sometimes you just have to tell them where to go and wash your hands with them because they, they'll they'll drag you right down. Yep. So, well, I, I think the issue too is so much of addiction comes from a very real place. So mm-hmm. you know, I had addiction issues as well, and it was coming from you know I have severe anxiety problems, 
you know, it's treated now, of course, the proper way, but it wasn't. I was self-treating it, and I found that this was the only thing that was really taking it away, right? So I, and it was discovered purely on accident. Got an injury, took some Vicodin, and went, oh, wow, like, this helps this other thing, and I didn't, I didn't know this was even a possibility. Well, that spirals, then that gets too expensive, and you keep, you you know the rest of the story. So on and so forth. yeah. Yeah, so the, the, Big thing with addiction and why it is so hard to break and why it's so hard to get through to people who have the addiction is that the foundation as to why they're addicted is such a real place. Absolutely. It is the, I, like, I am in pain, I am hurting. What you're telling me is that, hey, because of me, for my sake, right, you have to continue hurting. I need right. you to not, I need you to hurt so that I can feel better. That's a hard message to convey to someone. Yeah, and it right. starts way right. before you even put a drink or a drug in exactly. your body anyways. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah. a matter of getting to that point to and, realize and, well, that's and, what the root of the problem was. genetics. I mean, there is a yeah. genetic yeah. predisposition to, you know, that there is the addiction gene. I mean, that is a thing that we have we have seen. Listen, I've been around people who can can go in and out of Coke and all sorts of stuff, and it's like, I couldn't do that at all whatsoever, right? Yeah. If I did that thing, I would... Two weeks later, I'd wake up in a sewer. I mean, it's just, but there are people who I've been around that can just somehow do that. I don't know why. But the best thing is to just not try to find out if you're one of those people or not. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the, thing that's, is, that's the risk you don't know. Yeah, yeah, you have stick with the gravy boat. You'll be yeah, all right. right. <laughs> stick with the gravy boat. There you the, go. the fear of my heart exploding has always kept me away from that personally. Sure. The, 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 the yeah, sea the, stuff. The, yeah. Yeah, that, but, you know, any, any, yeah, I'm with you all. You know, it's like, huh, hey, it could be a scary path, and I respect you all that got better and got help because it's definitely a challenging road out there, and you see some yeah. people that just. Now, I think a lot of it, there's a societal stigma. As well, mm-hmm. I mean, if you it, as, as far as addiction, most people that haven't experienced it, and a lot of people don't consider alcohol that you know sure. that's that. I mean, it's it's just a drink, but they mm-hmm. don't understand. I mean, it leads to if I drink a beer today, going I will start smoking crack again. Sure, that's just all there is. It is a gateway. Drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, absolutely well, is. I mean, a, the, the yeah. issue is though absolutely. is that everything can be a gateway, exactly. right? I mean, you have to. So you have to be able to to figure it out for yourself. But the other thing, again, trying to reach people is that you're also trying to reach people that don't care about themselves. Right. Right. Oftentimes mm-hmm. they have no respect right. of themselves. It's not that they don't respect people around them, which they don't, but it's coming from not respecting yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love someone who's right next to you, right? right? It has to start with yourself. So what's happening is people who don't love themselves, you're trying to reason with them and say, hey, you're hurting yourself, right? And their brain is going, I don't care. Yeah. So it's you're, it's their losing battle. So in order to actually get through to someone, and it's not even about hitting rock. I, I hit rock bottom multiple times. Like yeah. that doesn't trap door. It's irrelevant. Rock got I mean, trap yeah, door, it's yeah. irrelevant. It's it, it, something. Ha- some switch has to flip, and you have to just all of a sudden go. Okay, now I'm ready. Now I want to do. And usually it comes from some place of self respect. Yeah. You some for whatever reason that switch flips. You yeah, go. I flips. respect myself. Yeah. So really, that's what we should be focusing is if you have addicts, I mean, do your best to try to get them to respect themselves right. and, and you know, point out the good things they're doing, point out the positives and say, cling on to that, right? Focus on the positive and hopefully you can get them to have that internal switch where they go, hey, I want to do more positive things. There you go. Do it. And that's the kind of people we have that work at Lemire Hillen Centers, believe it or not. The what, what you just said, like, you know, we, we have a lot of people in recovery that work there. So we, we understand where you're at. We understand how you're feeling. That was beautiful, man. Well, thank like, you. Seriously, thank you for sharing I, that. Man, I've, I've done it a lot. I've been through it. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't, I hardly ever talk about it because it's, you know, it's just one of those things. Right, where, yeah. And I also, I went into the military largely because of this. Uh, mm. There's a story behind there, but largely because of this, that's why I joined the military, which is really what finished getting me clean. Right. Um, and that, then that, that's funny because my oldest brother, that's how he got off crack. Yeah, he joined the Marines. And yeah, <laughs> man, it's, it has nothing to do with whether you want to or not. It's right. You get yeah. to a point where like that's really the only you need a structured, controlled environment, Absolutely. and jail is not that. Right? No, because no, no, you're, you're just no. perpetuating a disease in jail because again, you're you're giving it's constant negative reinforcement. Right. Where if you go into something like the military, there's this level of positive reinforcement where you are being controlled, but in a way that is bettering you in, in prison, you're being controlled, but all through negative. If you do this, this negative thing happens to you. Right. And we have figured out as a society, that's not how we control things. 
Right, you need. Yeah. You well, need I don't a mix. think we've quite figured it out. No, we haven't figured <laughs> many it out all the people, way. <laughs> many of us have trying. figured it out. Society in general, there's a lot that still don't know that. <laughs> yeah, but we're trying. And, and I can even spin it another way. When I joined the army, I've seen a lot of people turned into functional alcoholics mm-hmm. because oh, yeah. Yeah. the military. Yeah. You that know, was yeah. that was my next case, big thing. Yeah. And then yeah. get up and run at 4 a.m. and just be fine. What it's, oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I, yeah. I, no. I it's... spent I spent the better part of my twenties and early thirties uh, severe alcoholic. I mean, just it, daily. If if I wasn't drinking twelve day twelve to twenty beers a day, I must have been sick because mm. there you know it was every every single day, and I I actually I, I <laughs> what finally made me realize something was off is I woke up one morning with a vague recollection that I had talked to the uh, police the night before and i actually had to walk in because i didn't want to be driving to work i worked at i had to be at work at four o'clock every morning i didn't want to drive into work that early in the morning get pulled over and find out i had been given a some kind of citation that i never paid next thing i know they're carting me off to jail when i'm supposed to be going to work so i actually walked into the uh, police station that next morning handed them my id and said uh, what did i do and I found out they, they woke me up, passed out in a parking lot behind my house at 5 o'clock in the morning because I, I left the bar. I don't remember anything past about 11 o'clock. I, I was told I left the bar at about 2.30, and uh, that was the last they saw of me and until the uh, police woke me up. <laughs> And then yep. your next question was like, why does my ass hurt? <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew that. That was the part I No, that, that was at 7.30. Most yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people don't wake up with $20 yeah, so, in their pocket. Yeah. You know, that that was, spent that. Yeah. Yeah. But, the, but that was, that was uh, that, I love making jokes about it because that's what it was. Sure, yeah, at the same time, yeah. it was like, man. That was your aha moment, here. wasn't yeah. it? My, my thing, my aha moment for drinking, because I did when I was in the military and that's, yeah, that's a huge – all this and so much of addiction, too, is just misguided coping mechanisms, right? You're replacing – it's constantly if – you, if you already have a predisposition to cope horrifically, right, with getting addicted to pills and, and heroin and stuff like that, when you no longer have that, you're just going to find a new way right. to find, horribly find cope substitute. with your yeah. surroundings, right? It's So until you officially make the switch – so, yeah. of course, I drank – all day, every day, pretty much. Right. And I think my aha moment was really was getting to a point where I would be drinking all night and then I would get up and I would kind of have that headache. So I would drink a beer to kind of get rid of it. And then I would go pass a PT test. And then all of a sudden I went, yeah, like this is crazy. Like I shouldn't be able to do this. And I think that kind of spooked me. Like that was my aha moment. Like this is spooking me. And then also I'd met my wife right in that transition and she would bring up to me constantly that i was an alcoholic right, <laughs> to, right, right. and to stop drinking because so, the problem was i never got in trouble i never got in trouble i never was late for stuff i didn't have like you know personality issues nothing right so if, if none of that you're not getting again neg- that kind of negative reinforcement you're just going to keep doing it right because you don't really i don't i didn't see it as a problem well, yeah, I, I was about. The I same sold way. as, hey, at yeah. least I'm not doing Vicodin, right? At least yeah. I'm not shooting something in, my, in between my toes, like not smoking. Like crack. this isn't that right, bad, right. like you know. So, so again, you you talk yourself into like, and I could have spiraled. I mean, oh, who yeah, knows ab- absolutely. what that would have become had I not had someone going. It doesn't matter that you're not doing those things because you're destroying your liver, you're destroying your whatever, you're affecting chemicals in your brain, like you're doing all sorts of stuff that you can't see. So, well, yeah, ba- back when I was drinking all that much, I mean, I, n- I never missed a day of work. I didn't call in exactly. because I was hungover. Well, basically, when you drink that much constantly, you don't really no. get hungover because you don't go through withdrawals no. because it's always in your system. Or you get a little and, bit of the headache, so you have or, a shower beer, and yeah, it goes away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it just, I, I, I was a miserable person back then. I knew I was, uh, and it was just... That, that's kind of how things get Did out of Did you control. realize later how miserable you were, though? Absolutely, Yeah, yes. see, I, that was the thing is I thought I was perfectly fine until I'd stopped and I went, well, I was really depressed. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I was really in a, a bad place, and I had no idea. And then that, and that's the thing. that That's how, that's how a lot of this starts off, and you don't realize people that haven't been there don't realize how this can happen. No. And it's it's uh, because yeah. most people we get serious on the radio. Well, because here's now. and this is why yeah. this kind of goes first circle <laughs> to what I said about that that 19 year old kid, right? People genuinely don't understand right. why can't you just sit down and have a beer with lunch, right? 
I can do it. Why can't you? Right? Like, I don't possess some type of power that you don't possess. Why are you unable to sit down and have a beer with lunch? And it's like, I get that, but... Google it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, it's... And here's my thing. Like, I think, you know, and I'm just going to be blunt about this. I am never going to stop advocating for recovery. As long as I'm still doing what I need to be doing for myself, you know, working on my program one day at a time, I'm always going to be a voice for the voiceless out there. You know, a lot of people... I'm sure it's kind of like when people say they're vegans. Nobody wants to hear it. But here's the reality of the situation. People are dying out oh, there yeah. people are still dying and it's not just opiates now too so crystal meth's making a comeback um it never went away yeah, yeah, it I'm just, just got say. brushed under the surface but it never went away it was just in preble county for a long time <laughs> right yeah <laughs> well they were working yeah, on I mean, the supply hawking, hawking, yeah. Yeah, hawking they, ran out, they well. had to make a bunch more it's back like the yeah, there's only so many double wide trailers you can do that in. <laughs> yeah. so um you know but meth. seriously though like uh just uh, until the day i die god willing i want to oh. be you know a voice for the voiceless. And here, you know? and, and I know I've been dominating, so I'll try not to dominate so much. But one more thing here. I saw this thing on Facebook one time, and I thought this was so incredible because nobody. Okay. So Danny Trejo posted on Facebook. It said, like, I, it was like a birthday. It was a cake, and it said, like, had a 50 on it, and it said, like, 50 years clean. Right. Something along those lines. Wow. So the comments were basically like, oh, you mean you don't do drugs? Like, what do you mean you're 50 years clean? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And people were kind of making fun of it. And I had reposted it and just went like, I don't think people realize like what this actually means. First of all, congratulations on getting to fifty years. But more importantly, what that's the idea that's perpetuating is that you are an addict until the day that you die. Mm-hmm. And the moment you forget that is the moment you will succumb, succumb to it. You have to constantly live as if you are still because you are still an right. addict. That yeah. doesn't change. Yeah. The, the same thing that led you to that thing in the first place will lead you there again if you pretend like you're somehow better. It is, it's, not a, it's not an autoimmune disease. It doesn't go away. It's, it's always there. So I think the reason why people relapse so much, especially when you look at Philip Seymour Hoffman, for all accounts, he hadn't done heroin in a decade. But he let his guard down. Yeah. Let his guard down and it killed him. So yep. that's why Danny Trejo posted something that said 50 years in recovery because he is 50 years in recovery. He's still a drug addict. He just hasn't fed the addiction in 50 years. Right. But he's still an addict. That didn't change. Well, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a, you, you start up again. Because that's the danger a lot of people get into. They think, well, I, I've been there. I can control it now. Yeah. I'm, you know, well, me, for example, I've been having a couple beers every now and then at the club. And now, nights I'm on the way home half the time, I'm thinking, I should pick up some beer. Even though I don't really want a beer. Yeah. But it's in my head, I should pick up a beer. So there's a seed that's so, been yeah, planted there. It's, yeah, it's yeah. back. Uh, I mean, and now I just, I, I got it because I've been having to catch myself lately and thinking. It's this, it's very yeah. progressive. Oh, absolutely. And it's cunning, baffling, and powerful. Absolutely. That shit yeah. will sneak up on you just like that customer did. <laughs> you said schnish. I, I heard schnish. Schnish. Schnitzel. And my kids were the big t- game changer for me. Uh, Emma and Grace were my daughters. I used I went on legendary benders. I mean, I, for all know, for all know, I could be an alcoholic, or could have been, or you well, judge uh, or not. Honestly, the reason we're t- this is your intervention. Yeah. <laughs> you're actually, we were, we're, we're here. Yeah. You uh, your, your, your family told us not to say anything. <laughs> but we, we heard since your father getting We just wanted yeah. to all talk to you. <laughs> that's that's what uh, this really is. It's disguised as a radio show. No, go ahead, man. I'm I, sorry. I, I I actually, we're not actually it. broadcasting. This was all. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Dad, what are you guys doing here? I, I actually work with Scotty, and uh, just just to do this, he people, works with him at one eight six six. This is really Lemire Healing Center's radio station right now. And Lemire is it? Lemire. Lemire. Okay. The light. Lemire. Come to the light. Come to the light. Carolyn. But yeah, no, I, 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 go on, I go on some legendary benders, and even even away if I go out to town on my kids, I will still find myself spending a weekend where I. Do physically do damage to my body, but through the week I I don't drink that often. But there's time I'll have two or three beers and you know call quits. And I'm thankful that I can do stuff like that or not drink at all most of the nights, you know. So, but it is I I could see how you can get sucked up in something like that. It's a challenge. Well, and here's the beautiful thing about this: it's it's not up to me to tell you that you have a problem. It's not up to me to tell you that you have a problem or you have a problem. That's not in my damn business. All right, what I'm what I'm to do is to plant mustard seeds of hope, you know, to, uh, through my actions, not my words, people would be like, wow, there's something different. What's going on? Well, 
you know, I've learned how to, what I say, fully process my feelings. You no, know, because there's still times I detach. Like, I, I'll use comedy. That's right. I use my stand of comedy as a form of detachment sometimes, but I also use that as a form of therapy. Um, you know, those stories I tell up on stage, those are true stories. You know, maybe stretched. Well, yeah. yeah. Truth a little bit, you know, Sorry. just to add that Not funny together. element to it. But, you know, um, yeah, when I see my buddies and stuff drinking a bar, like, I don't judge people for what they do. That's, dude, if you want to drink and party, go for it. I just can't yeah. right. participate in that. <laughs> right. I'll hang out with you for well, as long again, as I and, can, but then, you know, don't don't be offended. As I was saying, that, and unfortunately, not, not, I guess, fortunately, it's not unfortunate, but fortunately, like, not everybody, you know, there are tons and tons of people who can sit there and have, oh, have beers and they're absolutely. perfectly fine. And, man, if that's you, great. But if you do <laughs> end up <laughs> having a problem, one eight six six four 4 Lemire Healing Centers, Westchester, Lemire Healing Centers dot com, and I will stop beating that up. Maybe no, you, no, you won't. No, that's okay. no, you won't. Yeah, you're right. You can also call two two four joke, I believe. Yeah, two two four joke. Or if if you want some of the therapy that he's talking about, uh, just email uh, Wiley Sunday Comics <laughs> yeah. at gmail there you go. Get some therapy, and you can get some stage time and therapy there. Yes, but uh, bring the funny. Yeah, bring the funny with your with your. Uh, Man, that uh, got real there story. for a minute. Yeah, yeah, it, it, did. Deep, wow. it yeah, did. We, be, we better awesome. take a break and collect our funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm thinking no, no, 90% what, what, what of my set wouldn't exist without break. beer. Take a guess. Uh, Iron Maiden? Wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anybody else want to guess? Potter's Field. Nope. I'm going to actually play some Mr. Stone. Oh, right I, nice. should, I should have guessed. Nice. So this, this is a little, this Wait, is did a, you just say question. Mr. Brownstone? You know what no, the meaning man. of that song is. <laughs> Mr. Stone oh, King. Okay. Gotcha. I've this, never heard this Mr. Is, Stone uh, King. This, this uh, a fellow that was a guest a while back, a uh, great guy. Uh, he actually, he also writes for, uh, he, he, he has some connections with, with uh, uh, state fairs. And he writes about how poorly constructed their rides are and all the injuries that result from them and from a lot of these amusement parks. Uh, if you want to check out some of his mu- music and some of his issues, some of his uh, articles and stuff about that, you can go to uh, stonekingsisland.com. <laughs> and wow. see the, the whole music. And all the hippies are like, yeah, where is yeah. that island at? Yeah, the good is Stone King's it, Island. King's Island. Not that does shock man. me that the Carnies aren't properly trained and up to date. It's weird. <laughs> you know, I mean, just yeah. looking at them, you figured these you, guys you are like engineers. Good, man, it's yeah. above board. Just yeah. looking at them, I'm even just wondering if they've had their uh, vaccination. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to play a little Mr. Stone, Stone King. This is a question of faith.
are made for working but the weekends those are made for gaming join ellison smith every saturday for a new episode of salt water gaming as he breaks down video games of all different genres consoles platforms and eras get a bit of the old and a bit of the new a bit of the action and a bit of the mystery get it all every saturday on salt water gaming brought to you by eventide entertainment a little bit of radio silence there. That's okay. We're getting distracted here in the radio show. We're back. This is the life. I like that voice. Yeah. Yes. The life radio of oh, the radio show. Marceau, that's Marceau's the, the greatest old, hits yeah. were being played. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. That that was his uh, promo. for. What you got Marceau, over there, man? Marceau. Are those news stories? I have news stories. Just for you. Scott. Can we do yeah, that? I didn't bring these for anybody else. <laughs> I really wish that that would have been on the video. <laughs> he couldn't just make the sound. He had to use his hand to move his jaw. Right, right, right. Well, that was that was pulling on my, my little uh, yeah. turkey giblet. Your turkey <laughs> giblet? I don't think that means what you think it means. I was, uh, I was yanking on my giblet. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry louis louis ck i stole your bit oh no uh, <laughs> this is more like a chiclet yeah <laughs> anyway I, I didn't know <laughs> oh let's see here what what do we have for news uh most of us never knew that watching six contestants trying to climb a slippery staircase could be so compelling but here we are in the upside down we call 2017. An episode from yep. a Japanese game show featuring a set of slippery stairs appeared on YouTube this week, and it has captured the internet for a good reason: the display of pure, the display of pure athleticism, the never-ending drama, and the joy of watching people in colorful latex onesies tumble down a staircase. Well, it's funny because they also they're all the same colors of the Power Rangers. <laughs> I saw, yeah, because yeah. I saw it. They are, they yeah. Are. <laughs> and if you ever want to see power rangers fall down and who doesn't yeah i'd like to see him fall down and the staircase who, and who slippery doesn't. ones at that slippery ones at that. yes oh yeah in japan in japan I'd in the lo- upside I'd down love... nice uh Up, in the upside stranger down things reference there the upside down yes the upside down yeah. stranger things it's a good show Oh, yeah. but I, 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 I love the Japanese game shows they are oh, so fantastic they're so bizarre but yeah. fun that like you just can't Stop watching. It, it the reminds me of, and I know it's been they've been on for a while, but it reminds me of Idiocracy. You've oh, seen the, yeah, the game shows that are on Idiocracy. Yeah. It's like I'm baiting. Yeah. <laughs> Go away, <laughs> Dex Shepard. All those shows remind me of like a Doctor <laughs> Seuss nightmare. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Have you ever seen mm. uh, Most Extreme Elimination Challenge? Yes. yes. Oh, I love those. Those are. Some, uh, I, I have like three seasons on DVD. They, those are. Bonsai. Fantastic. Have you ever seen those? No. <laughs> I, what they've done is they. T- it's Tachiki's Castle is the original uh, Japanese game show, and what they've done is they've taken them, and they have redubbed the soundtrack with these, <laughs> with the the American voices and what. Oh, they are hilarious because they make up names for the teams competing each other. It's like. They 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 have the the meat the meat packers against uh, the, the 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 hospital you know just yeah and weird stuff like that. I think just I have really seen some clips commentary. of it. 
I also yeah, love, love that those. I love that you said a phrase that doesn't get uttered very often, What's which that? is I have three seasons on DVD. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I love because mm-hmm. I've that had one. them for that long. Is that a callback? That's a callback. <laughs> yeah, that's just fantastic stuff. <laughs> right. I watch them every now and then yep. on my uh, video disc player. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's incredible. Uh, Britain's National Trust has told Santa Claus to get back on a sleigh and get out of town. What the heck is that? <laughs> ah, I tried to get a teletype sound for your news. Oh, uh, <laughs> instead we had Vietnam just That's broke out over here. Uh, great, so North work. Korea is here. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. I dropped the ball there. The it happened. <laughs> <laughs> what it's is finally happening? <laughs> Yep, I <laughs> dropped them all there, yeah. spilling ashes, playing the wrong sound, Man. sweating so all over the place. It's so great having you on the show. Jim, yeah, so what we call so those jessisms? He's, he's screaming <laughs> into the microphone. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a bop yeah, yeah, impression. It's just, just the great. mess. Just <laughs> <awful>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, stop sweating. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's it's Wow. Wow. What did you run a marathon over there by yourself? That nurse had one hell of an impact on you, brother. She really She uh, she was hot. I'm not going to lie there. Christmas. Where's she at? Uh, She's at the front desk. Tan little thing. Uh, Okay. Built for both speed and comfort. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Moving on. (laughs) Britain's. Direct your lawsuits once again to. Uh, That that one isn't to me. Uh, Britain's National Trust has told Santa Claus to get back on the sleigh and get out of town or at least out of the organization's famous estates and homes uh, because he's too American. Uh, but the agency, which runs more than 300 historic buildings, including ho- including homes, castles, and forts, is keeping the jolly elf. They just want its events to use the proper British name of Father Christmas instead. The Evening Standard said that someone at the Trust accidentally emailed internal guidance on the matter to several members of the press, uh, saying, Can you change Santa to Father Christmas? I know... You've used Father Christmas later on, but uh, National Trust guidance is never to use Santa. Some UK media outlets call this call it a Santa ban, but the organization said that's not the case at all. They don't want Santa used. And a bunch of wankers. Yeah. Because we all know what Santa spells, right? Yeah. Well, are you going to make a oh, Satan yeah, reference? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to make a yeah. Satan reference. You beat yeah. me to it. Oh, I well thought you were going to say Nasta. <laughs> <laughs> Nasta. Even better. Nasta. Yeah. Yeah. Look Tan-ass. at you, Don. That's <laughs> Nasta. <Tan-ass. laughs> wow. Look at I, you. I, Don, Don, you know, you should be a comedian, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Father uh, Christmas. Are those anagrams we're just shooting out? Or I don't I even know what you call those. Uh, I don't know. Uh, something like that. You know. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> palindrome? <laughs> palindrome? What's, what's that, that? That's that's if they were the same backwards and forwards. Is that yeah. a palindrome? That's a palindrome. Yeah. Like race car? That sounds like yeah. a position. There you, there you go. I had to think about it for a second. Yeah. Palindrome. That's a thinker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An Italian hairstylist was driven to make what is perhaps the strangest car ever. It's certainly the hairiest, even according to uh, Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, Maria Lucia Mugno, 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 not it's M-U-G-N-O, so I guess it's Italian, so it'd be like lasagna, so it'd be Mugno. Weirdos. Of Salerno, <laughs> of Salerno spent, more than, spent more than 100, spent more. <laughs> um, well, here he goes again. Uh, yeah, here spent we go. more than 150 <laughs> hours good. covering, covering her Fiat 500 gravy boat. <laughs> <laughs> covering her fiat 500 which is a car not to be confused with you know thank you with with 264 pounds of human hair acquired from india oh, they had to throw that in there. Ew, indian, indian hair. hair yes uh, ew. She said, <laughs> <laughs> you said ew. Wow. so appropriate for the thanksgiving wow. holiday that was the weirdest was not, pres- not native that was the weirdest prejudice i've ever heard yeah, <laughs> That is uh, Indian hair. <laughs> Ew. That's the least racist thing I've ever said, <laughs> actually. So we're being I honest. Love that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you should uh, hear. You should hear him in the in the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Not stop. She told Barcroft TV, "My inspiration came from a dare, a bet, whilst I was working. My friend didn't think I was capable of making a car that was entirely covered in real hair." And when she well, and, and, she he, and yeah, and when he saw my work of art, he was completely shocked by what he made, and he said, "What the hell is wrong with you? 
Uh, no, uh, Munoz's car uh, may be hairy, but it's street legal because she didn't cover the engine in hair. That would have been a fire hazard. <laughs> Is that what she said? What, that's what she said. This would have created a fire, fire hazard. hazard. No kidding. I also like she said she hair be, on a combustion engine. Said she she made a car cover like covered in hair. Right. Like, she didn't make, she it. make she a just car. Covered she just a car in hair. Covered a car in hair. It's very different than making a she car. Didn't, with hair. Yeah. She didn't start her own company. Making rip cars off out of the hair. Fiat five hundred yeah. and make a hair shape. Make out of Indian hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> very very specific. Yeah. Got to be specific. Yeah. About your car hair. Yeah, car hair. <laughs> but she kept yeah. her motor is that clean. Like, is that like the seat fries that, that get stuck in between your seats? It's, yes, it's yeah, car, absolutely. Car hair? Yeah, car hair. Well, I, I actually, my, my wife's Indian, so every now and then I find Indian hair in my car. There, well, <laughs> that's, mm. yeah. start, cover, yeah. start covering little pieces I, of well, it in it. Yeah, I was going to say that, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, you, you do keep a bag. Well, it's right next to you. It's You do yeah, keep a bag yeah. of your wife's hair that's, with you at all times. My... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. It's right it's in the uh, scrap me. paper yeah, box yeah. over there. Oh. Okay. A Florida couple, which I love Florida news. I have two back-to-back Florida stories. Nice. They're both fun. Nice. A Florida couple says they discovered a dead frog in one of their water glasses earlier this month when they sat down for a meal at the Tallahassee Waffle House. So just remember that when you go into some yes. classy places. I love like the, the Waffle Tal- House stories, <laughs> man. I That's do. a Florida story wrapped in a Waffle oh. House story. Mm. We are going for gold. Uh, Claire Sheets. That's her name, not an order. Okay. <laughs> Claire Sheets said her husband sipped some ice water before he noticed the frog floating in the cup. They immediately filmed a video showing the frog in the glass before pouring it out on the table and calling the waitress over. Uh, Sheets said she and her husband left without eating the meal they ordered. Why? There wasn't a frog in the meal. And that, and that she filed complaints with state health inspectors and Waffle House corporate officials. Like, they don't get those every day. The Waffle <laughs> yeah. House. Jo- join the Surprisingly, list. the Waffle House location passed a later inspection, though the restaurant was cited for 11 violations, according to the records from Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. The inspection report did not mention the frog incident. <laughs> because that would have been the black eye that Waffle House would have put rifle, right. Waffle House right out. Mm. <laughs> rifle House. Did I say Rifle House? <laughs> I, listen, uh, I, oh, <laughs> real close. I was allowing it. Uh, <laughs> those White NRA houses. folks love their Rifle Houses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love my Rifle House. <laughs> yeah. Give me that frog-covered water glass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, why would you even at this point, why would you lodge complaints with Waffle House? Exactly. Where exactly. do you think that's yeah. going? What, How do you what think were you this doing, ends? What were you doing in a Waffle House sober enough to find a frog, <laughs> a frog in your yeah. glass? <laughs> yeah, you should have been. Because yeah. it's a Waffle House. Yeah, why are your expectations so high? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, first of all, yeah. lower your expectations. Yeah, it's, okay. it's not Shea Waffle House. It, it's, a, <laughs> it's a frog, not a, you know, it's not a bird. Right. If it's exactly. a bird, I understand. Yeah. It's a frog. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah, no, if but it's, it, if you found your pet skunk in your water glass, sure, there'd be a complaint. Then you yeah. complain, yeah. But but no, it's like what do you if you make a complaint to Waffle House corporate? <laughs> what what Sounds change funny. do you think that you're about? to Which make? I'm picturing I, their office like panel board. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best. Oh, we yeah, used to do. So I, so when I was in the army, I was a paralegal, and so every Ooh, time wow. there's any type of <laughs> transactions. There are it's there's counseling statements, right? And counseling statements <gasps> are what lead to non judicial punishment and then you have judicial and blah 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 blah. Everything starts with a counseling statement though. So on our board in our office, so I, I shared an office with another paralegal, we used to put up the funniest counseling statements. These sergeants who had just horrible grammar, spelling, we'd put them up there. Um counseling state like people getting counseled for just nonsense. Uh, we put them up there. I had one guy that referred to someone's dirty room as he felt disenchanted. That was always, always one of my favorite ways of phrasing being like upset that the person's room was dirty. So we put that one up there. I'm disenchanted. By so we, we had a good little collection. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I was very disenchanted with your lack of something. I was like, wow. who says that? Like that's the just trying to be fancy. I something. guess. But anyway, so we would just keep. Keep That's like board. going into a Waffle House and expecting exactly. not, to not to fight a frog. <laughs> like, you, listen, you're the idiot. Yep. I, one thing I used to do, I, I used to work at a hotel, and I, I loved going through. Uh, I, was, I was a night manager, you and I comments? loved every now and then going through, not the comments, but going through the uh, the uh, applications that were turned in. Ooh, yeah, I found one, one the one time that just cracked me up. They were applying for housekeeping, 
and that's how they wrote it. House key ping. It was three separate words. I was like, <laughs> you're hired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's creative. <laughs> right. House key ping. Yeah. But they just got fired from Waffle House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they lost their frog. <laughs> All right, a Flor- another Florida story. A Florida man being chased by police phoned 911 and asked the dispatcher to contact the White House so he could speak to his close friend Donald Trump. Sure. Uh, we made a deal, he said, said marijuana suspect Eric Freiberg. Eric spelled with an A. And Freiberg. Freiberg, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your name is Freiberg. Don't do drugs. Yeah. Uh, he said his re- said of his relationship with uh, Don- uh, President during the bizarre emergency call early Thursday, the appeal didn't work, though. Call your county sheriff's de- deputies uh, called Friedberg, 33 years old, after caught him after a seven-mile car chase. Despite his attempts to weasel out of trouble invoking Trump, blaming, <laughs> blaming, <laughs> blaming Jews and claiming his mother had been in an accident, uh, I guess... Uh, Eric Friedberg doubles as, uh, uh, what's his name? Mel Gibson. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, deputies booked him on charges, including aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer, battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting an officer with violence. Was the officer with violence or was he resisting him with yes, violence? Yes, with violence. Okay. Uh, tampering with evidence and possession of marijuana. He was jailed on $99,500 bail. I'm sure he didn't have that. Uh, but he's, his buddy Trump might get him out of it. Yeah. Uh, it all started when a deputy noticed a marijuana-like scent, which it could have been a pet skunk, uh, emanating from a vehicle parked in a, post, in a post office parking lot. The officer looked inside the car and saw a baggie containing a green leafy substance. When he tried to confiscate the baggie, Friedberg allegedly grabbed it and stuffed it into his mouth. Then Friedberg sped away and called 911. <laughs> <laughs> are you getting a call? What's yeah, you have a light over there? Flashing. Do I have a light flashing? We are getting a call. We're getting a phone oh, call. Wow. Maybe this is a complaint. <laughs> Hello, life. you're on the air. Hello? 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 Yes. Um, I'm actually calling to, uh, I wanted to schedule an interview for uh, 106.9. Uh, my name is Brad Benning. I'm a hip-hop artist who goes by the name of uh, V3. And um, I was just wondering if uh, you guys could uh, fit me in a slot to promote my new single. Either this Friday or Saturday. Uh, could you tell us more about your qualifications, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. We're, we're actually on the air right you're now. You're hired, dude. I don't, you're I don't hired. the calls, but you got the job. Just show up. You got the job. <laughs> all of your stuff. <laughs> Just come on, man. Come on, man. You got the job. <laughs> come on. Uh, none of the directors are in, this, in the uh, in the We're making right the now, shot with shot calls here. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you, sir. Yeah, yeah, listen, we're going to go have full it. rank and say that you got it. So, and um, crazy, you're, you're yeah. calling right. number one, so you you win. That's Absolutely yes, nothing. You, you are, you're calling number one. Do you want a shirt? Yeah, we we got Wiley's T-shirts <laughs> and folded pieces no, of so, orange paper. So, none, none of the directors out; are, they're all out because it's uh, Thanksgiving break here at the station. So uh, it's just us idiots in here doing a show. And we're actually getting ready uh, to start a fire in here, so you called just in time. Right, exactly. that Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we lit it's up hours ago. Day. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, uh, uh, Master B. What's your yeah. name again? <laughs> Uh, v, uh, v3. 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 All right. Master, v, uh, I, Master V might be a little too encroaching on yeah. that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Man, this, this is a hell of a start to the day. I think. <laughs> that is crazy. That's, that's all right, though. You get right on the air. Just yeah, man, we've just been huffing glue the whole time. Right How do you think we feel right now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Starting your day after one. Way to get on. Uh, I know. It. I like that. Yeah. He, said, he said a good start to the day. Carpe diem. It's 150. <laughs> Starting his day. That, that's, oh, man. That's, 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 that's great if you can get it, man. Hey. <laughs> Well, shoot, man. Well, shoot. Since I'm on the air, let me let me let me plug myself real quick. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Hey, 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 check this out. Hey, Three, do that, three, and I'll five give five you a phone number. You can download it on iTunes right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to 106.9 for the uh, instant interview that we just did. And, uh, yeah, for sure. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. one 866 4 detox uh, you, you can call back and check with the Mr. Adam White, Whiteman. He's our general manager. I think he'll be back in on Monday. And he's so not even white. I don't think he'll be able to get you in this week. <laughs> All right, got All right. You. But, hey, you, you just promoted on this show. Yeah. This, this also goes out as the Life Radio Show podcast through Eventide Entertainment Podcast <laughs> Network 
and it's out on Spreaker and YouTube and iTunes and Podbean. It's all over the world. Yeah, so you're you're on all that now. So. <laughs> I Spon- appreciate that. Yeah, spontaneously. Uh, thanks for calling in. Keep working, man. Keep, keep, keep working. getting that worm. <laughs> yeah. Early bird. Yeah. Keep getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No problem. Have, have a good Thanksgiving. Yeah, right. Keep getting that worm. <laughs> You know what I mean, big worm? Yeah. I mean, big worm. He goes, I just love how he went. He said, he said this is a great start to the day. <laughs> I I could I'm, like, I'm looking at my phone like, dude. 150. Oh, that check was out, check out me. He needed that phone number. He needed that phone number. Listen, no, I'm checking him out. See, I told you he Listen, I'm for sure checking him out. V3, I'll put him up on iTunes right uh, now. My 2017 is complete. That don't take much. That was nothing, perfect. Nothing like a spontaneous phone interview. Man, that was beautiful. You're calling in the schedule one. Oh, that's funny. Uh, V3, thanks for calling in, man. It's good to hear from you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Prish. Oh, man. Much street cred. <sighs> All right, uh, one, we'll go with another news story if we can collect ourselves again. <laughs> Please, another caller. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know things are bad when a porn star thinks the country's getting screwed, and not in a good way. Uh, that's why adult actress Sherry Deville is considering running against oh. Donald Trump in 2020 election, along with 90s rapper Coolio as her running mate. <laughs> oh, oh, and her sister Cruella. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, yeah, sure, I'll take it. Yeah, why not? Uh, though DeVille hasn't officially filed and won't until she's convinced there's enough momentum to pursue it seriously, she does have a website, pornstarforpresident.com. Go there now. <laughs> Followed by her movie, Fantastic Voyage, featuring Coolio. <laughs> Fantastic Voyage 6. Uh, uh, in mm. August, she released an introductory video featuring Coolio, a, uh, co- featuring Coolio, a former pro wrestler named Virgil, and various oh. other porn stars. So, hey, porn. Old Virgil. <laughs> porn star that was for uh, President. Million Dollar Man, I'm Ted DiBiase's uh, right hand man, I think. Was Correct. It? Virgil was yeah. his bodyguard. I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Uh, so, there's <laughs> there's that. Would you vote for a porn star for president? I mean, why not? I'm yeah. not biased. Yeah, why not? You know, I mean, at least. The pictures I'm pulling up, she's she looks all right in my book. Why pay for that when you can get the milk for free? <laughs> yeah, did you go straight to porn star for president? Oh, no, I just Googled her name oh, and a bunch just, of pictures. <laughs> you just Google it. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Like I said, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I'd, I'd vote for her. Yeah. <laughs> I'd not. vote for that. <laughs> America. America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! Well, that's, I am well, so glad we we decided to keep going for another hour. Been... <laughs> yeah, because that phone call would have never happened. Man. Exactly, we'd have never met V three. <laughs> <laughs> Are we yeah. sure V three is his name? Because the V three that I just found uh, sounds Jamaican, and like, that man did not sound Jamaican. Well, it could be a persona. You know. Oh man, I gotta find him now. Well, well, I'll have to re-listen to the to the to the thing. See if I can catch him. Well, neither did Snow. Snow didn't Snow sound Jamaican. Just goes by V three. Yeah, that Canadian was not Jamaican. Yeah, Snow. <laughs> Snow. Canadian was not Jamaican. He wasn't. He just faked it. Licky boom boom now. <laughs> oh. Well played, sir. Dude, oh, thank well. you. Phew. Uh, what we got? We got one more. This is for the gamers out there. This is a bit of a disappointment. Yes. Oh. A, a racist video game designed to play and on ugly stereotypes about Chinese restaurants will not be released, according to its developers. Uh, Markham, uh, Ontario-based Big O Tree Games, whose name is likely a play on the word bigotry. Yeah, you think? Mm. It's Big O Tree Games. Uh, posted the following statement on his website Thursday. Uh, After careful consideration and taking the time to listen to the public's opinion, uh, we have decided... It's not in anyone's best interest to release Dirty Chinese Restaurants. <laughs> What's it called? Dirty Chinese Restaurants. Oh, my gosh. We would like to make a sincere for- and formal apology to the Chinese community and wish to assure them that this game was not created with an intentional interest of inflicting harm or malice against Chinese culture. Out of respect, we will begin removing all marketing media pertaining to Dirty Chinese Restaurant off our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube accounts. These accounts will also be removed. We ask the press to please respect our privacy at this time as we begin the task of removing all our content. Man. The game, as originally promoted, was centered centered around a character named Wong Fu, who was running running the sketchiest (laughs) restaurant imaginable. 
The developer said the players would score points by evading taxes and immigration officials <laughs> and by saving food costs via dumpster diving after chase or chasing after dogs and cats with a cleaver. <laughs> I'm going to defer to the show racist. I am. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> see, the, the part I'm disappointed about with this being pulled is that um, there's a hidden gem in there where you can sneak in this back door and you get a $5 happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> and that's totally like, no, I'm just. Yeah, but no substitution. <laughs> No, absolutely not. <laughs> so you stick it in I, here? I, so honestly, why why would they pull it? I guess it's a little racist. I'm, I'm <laughs> just a little, mean, listen, just a if that's your, your name is Big O Tree. Exactly. Like, that I would just think do that it. Would be, Who cares? Yeah. It sounds Who cares? like a dude on Tech Nine's label. Big O Tree. Big O Tree. Yeah. <laughs> big O Tree. He's strange, big O Tree. Strange music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. I like just go with it at that point. Like yeah. whatever, you already yeah, get you, it. Yeah, if you're gonna name yourself bigotry, you might as well just just do it. Who cares? How oh, come it. Levi's can still sell Dockers? I, said, I give up. What's that? I give up. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm just wondering. <laughs> I, was, I was curious. Wasn't do we have time for one more? Chet and posse no, wearing those better. in that March. I will. I will save these for later. They're they're good ones though. Delicious. But that's all right. That's we all right. we made it through an entire episode we, and didn't we, talk about tiki torches. Until now. Until now. Until now. Until now. <laughs> I was trying to you avoid that. You are welcome. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, fantastic. I appreciate you guys coming in. I appreciate and you, spending man. spending the day before Thanksgiving hanging out with us. Happy Thanksgiving, uh, Don. I just burped into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that <laughs> is the worst. Well, everybody Sadly, at Lemire like, Healing Center's happy Thanksgiving. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to the Healing Center. One eight six six four a detox. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, let, let's let's go let's go around again. We'll go clockwise again. We'll start with Jess, uh, since that's clockwise for me. <laughs> go figure. And we'll see what we'll see what we got going on this uh, coming up here soon with shows and yeah, any other kind I'm, of promotional I'm, stuff you want to do. I'm not plugging anything. Uh, but if anyone needs a, a comic to pinch hit, I'll be more than happy to. I'm. I want to say I'm thankful for being on this show today. And for stretchy pants. So thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, you mean like yoga pants? <laughs> no, like the kind of my waist. Oh, you know, okay. The, okay. So yeah, I, yeah, I have yeah, a pair of yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. by the way, like, like I wear life coaching pants. <laughs> life changing. So they're they're like maternity clothes. Yeah. Uh, I guess they're, oh, cool. you get them at Costco. Cool. They're, they're Costco <laughs> jeans. Costco jeans. 15 jeans. bucks. Boom. And they have a stretch to them. But they're wow. jeans. But they're really comfortable. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, Scotty, um, how are you gonna follow that? <laughs> you got two shows I, coming up. This yes, week, I right? do. Friday, the Cry yeah, for Help Cry tour, for help and um, the Thanksgiving show, Wiley's Comedy yeah. Club, eight p.m. Saturday, and that's obviously the only thing he wants to plug. And right. Saturday, um, I'm about to go see this nurse. <laughs> um, Saturday at Wiley's, eight p.m. Uh, Luke Capasso, Jesse Nuts headline in that. Doug Morgan, Doug Morgan, no. Dale Blumquist. <laughs> I mean, there's some. Man, there's some there's some funny going oh, yeah. on in Dayton that's, that's this weekend. Gonna be, that's going to be a great so, show. I yeah. wish I could make it to the. Well, that's the thing. That's the Saturday one. Yes. Yeah, I can make it. I Beautiful. will be there for that. One. Awesome. Bring your giblet. <laughs> <laughs> never, <laughs> leave, never leave home without them. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, Kyle? do you have a do you have a phone number that you think maybe we should call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you find yourself in a again. state of dysfunction with your family and they say you need help, then one eight six six four a detox. LemireHealingCenters.com. There it is. How do you spell it, Lemire? L-U-M-I-E-R-E. -E. Try that one more time. L-U-M-I-E-R-E. -E. There it I is. E. Okay. I thought they were like an extra E. <laughs> we're like, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I, just, I just want to make sure that they get their promotion when the show, when the show goes out. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I host two podcasts. If you're a big MMA fan, I don't know how many of you are out there, but if you are, uh, check out Lab Moth MMA. Uh, that is my bread and butter. It's my, uh, you know, that's the podcast that I do. A couple episodes a week, interview fighters and all sorts of stuff. So if you're into MMA, check out Lab Moth MMA. Uh, or, of course, the Nicolas Cage Movie Review Hour. Uh, you can find both podcasts on iTunes. Search up Lab Moth MMA for the MMA one or for the Nicolas Cage. Uh, just type in Nicolas Cage Movie Review Hour or everywhere you can find a podcast. All right. Well, thanks again, guys, for coming in. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. Had a blast. And, Thank and, you. And, and some good, serious discussion about yeah. addiction that always needs to happen because mm. that needs to get uh, – we need we need more awareness. Education's key, man. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for coming in. You guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And everybody else listening at home, even if you're not, 
<laughs> <laughs> Even if you decided not to listen today, have a happy Thanksgiving anyway. No hard feelings. You'll catch us on the next one. All right. See you next week. This has been the Life Radio Show on WWSU 106.9 with your host, Don Smith. The Life is also available in podcast form on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blueberry, and YouTube, as well as on Eventide Entertainment's podcast network. Be sure to like the Life Radio Show on Facebook, and if you have any comments or suggestions, email thelife1069 at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Now get out there and enjoy some live comedy this week. You can check out Wiley'sComedy.com for all your upcoming shows. <laughs>